<laughs> we were just chatting with uh, Ian Anderson, who's publisher of Albuquerque Business First. If he looks a little tired, he's a new dad. How old is your baby? Um, she just turned one month. Oh wow! On oh my gosh! So she's uh, yeah, she's talking, walking the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah. she's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She was going to take her place later. this morning, but yeah, uh, yeah. I, mean, I came instead. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting much sleep? Um, you know what? She's been she's been pretty. Uh, I mean, gosh, she slept six and a half hours straight the other night, That's which wow. good. You, you thought know, that was amazing. It's like more sleep than I usually get. So yeah. that sure, was fantastic. But uh, she's been uh, amazing, and uh, my wife's a saint. So that's it. You got the combination of those two. Great yeah. stuff. I get okay sleep. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. Ian is here with uh, Albuquerque Business First, and he said, "Hey, we got to get you guys the new logo. See, yeah. that's the old one now, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, congrats on the new reconfiguration, the new redesign. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of changes. Um, obviously, uh, uh, you know, just constant state of change in the media environment. Indeed. That's our uh, yeah, our new cover, um, whole new design layout. We worked with uh, Mario Garcia, who is uh, Garcia Media. He rolled out the Wall Street Journal uh, redesign, Wall Street Journal Europe, Wall Street wow. Journal Asia. He's like the design guru when yeah. it comes to this stuff. Uh -huh. It's, uh, but yeah, I mean, great uh, look and feel, just a very more, you know, it's not as congested like a lot of newspapers where everything's kind of crammed in as many. Uh, I noticed that there's a lot more, um, what's the word? It, Open. Yeah, yeah. you know, yes. it, it actually, it, it, it plays well on a tablet. It, yeah. um, it gives you just more room to kind of digest there's some deep dive or a lot of our deep dive stuff in the weekly edition and then you know areas where you can kind of jump in and have those quick bites and and snapshots of uh, you know just with varying amounts of time that we all have mm -hmm. you can kind of either sink your teeth into an article or you can have quick yeah. infographics and kind of uh, consume media that way and you did have a big article on Friday on economy did yeah. on uh, really the re reinventing of our city. Yeah, your staff did a great job with that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's all about where are we going next. I like that forward look. You know, it's a uh, we've. I mean, this is all all hands on deck. So each uh, one of the the pillars of this relaunch and of the the new weekly edition is that we have a, a big cover story, a big deep dive, and you've uh, mm -hmm. we've been working up to this for the entire year. So you've seen bits and pieces of it. Yeah. Um, this was a piece. Really, it's a. Um, you know, we've got a third of our government, obviously, the, or a third of our GDP, um, you know, coming from federal federal government. So right. it's a how do we wean ourselves off of that and then we take a look at other cities that really they had to reinvent themselves you know yeah. pittsburgh they lost 250,000 jobs in the span of uh two or three years mm -hmm. i mean that's a crisis where you really it's almost everybody has to be getting on the same page and agree that you know we got to take action and who's going right. to step up and who's going to lead you know what i like in in a I said this for many years on the radio and said here on this TV show. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here and create some new solution. There are places that have done the things and overcome the problems that we're facing. Right now. So let's just kind of follow their path. And uh, that's a great idea to go to other cities and find out what they did to renovate. Right. Yeah. So I mean, so we look at Oklahoma City, obviously, with uh, uh, just how far they've come in the last 20 years, right. and they did it by really it was two billion dollars in infrastructure and quality of life products. Mm. You know, they when they lost uh, they lost a major economic development deal with a, a, an airline coming to the city, and they lost it not because of tax incentives, because they actually had the most competitive offer out of out of all right. the deals. They lost it because they they pulled their senior staff and their staff couldn't imagine living in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And so there was wow. a wake up call where they just really, uh, you know, it was a call to arms for them to, to really start investing in themselves mm -hmm. and investing in their quality of life projects. Um, and then we take a look at, um, we take a look at Columbus, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, that was one that um, really didn't have an identity. It felt like it was just kind of, you know, a, waiting for someone to tell them who they were and what they were uh -huh. Uh -huh. and in 2010 they started a um, really it was a, a campaign for 150,000 jobs in 10 years oh. not too dissimilar from our 160,000 jobs uh, Very that, much we, so. that we've uh, uh, our jobs council has come up with that we need yeah. to do they're already 50,000 jobs in 
That's you know? not too bad. So it's yeah, I mean, pretty good. considering the economy and you know, not that bad. you're firing the thing up and in And they've, they've got some measurable goals. That's it. Mm -hmm. which, which is nice. Yeah, no, absolutely. So. Now tell us a little bit about some other things that we can look forward to. Um, and uh, so as far as the, the redesign? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a lot of, uh, when we, uh, so when we did focus groups and we were kind of pulling our audience, we, we see what do, or we heard what our audience wants. Mm -hmm. So they want, um, really, they're in the corner office, they want actionable insight on how they can grow their business. And then we have a part of our audience that they want to be in the corner office. So they want to learn how to get there. So sure. it's, uh, it's really, they want, you know, who do I need to know? They want breaking news real time. You know, yeah. they don't want it based around a, a deadline anymore that doesn't right. exist. Right. So it's, uh, if it's a breaking news story, they want it fast. They want it wherever they are. And they, mm -hmm. they want it, uh, uh, and then they want deep dive context and analysis in um, just the behind the headlines, not the, right. you know, not the 150, 200 word, you know, headline stuff. They really want to find out why, why do I care about this? Yeah. So. And I noticed y'all are doing a lot more of that incorporating social media and kind of breaking news, not just here's that tagline, but okay, right. here's the story. Right. Click here for more, you know? Right. So, um, you know, back in uh, the old days of two years ago, we yeah. were uh, really, yeah. I mean, we the were good old days. the good old days of <laughs> two, two years, years ago. ago. <laughs> it, uh, you know, weekly publication, if there was a breaking news story, what do we do with that? Yeah. You know, it's almost like um, it, it was, yeah. it became extremely hard to break news in print, especially when you're a weekly. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we kind of flipped everything on its head and we just, we really, we went digital first, true digital first, where um, it, it was get everything up as fast as we can, break news, scoop news, and, uh, and fight for it, be very competitive. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of take the whole deep dive um, and, and really let digital breaking news drive what we, uh, what we actually go into in print. So yeah. it's very different from a lot of media outlets where they just take what's in, you know, online and then they just kind of replicate it and right. put it. Right, it has to do it. That's all they, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. But we understand that the, the mediums, they do very different things yeah. and they're meant to, uh, they're meant to do different things, so, yeah. yeah. Well, without giving away any company secrets or anything, sure. talk about your web traffic uh, uh, and if if you've seen it increase and what the what the trend line is? Yeah, so, um, so like straight up, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it, you know, and it's funny because it, it's trying to figure out what is the normal kind of the normal uh, trajectory of if you just stay the same, your traffic will still go up because mm -hmm. of right. the amount of eyeballs that are starting to really just go right to online as far yeah. as news. Um, you know, from our point of view. It's, um, we look at direct traffic, so you see a lot of sites that they've got, uh, you know, it's the slideshows of 3,000, like the, the 100 coolest words, and you're like kind of clicking yeah. through right. just the page view kind of monsters that... It, that it's annoying. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. it is annoying. You want to so, see number yeah. one, but you have to go through all 30. <laughs> so, you know, so what yeah. do we look at? We look at direct traffic. Those are people that are coming to our website directly. So. Um, it, we look at uh, search, so how many people are coming in via search word, mm -hmm. um, and then we look at time on site, but we look at local direct users. So a lot of organizations, they have um, fantastic, you know, growth in web traffic, but if it's coming from New York, you know, Chicago, LA, or DC, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess it, how relevant is that if you're really at the end of the day advertising is what kind of keep the lights on and sure you know a hedge fund guy from New York isn't going to go to uh, educators uh, credit union to, to yeah. get a car loan so yeah. Yeah. you know it's we really we look at market penetration on the local level and uh, and really just the engagement of a, a local audience and from that standpoint we are absolutely growing gangbusters so that's good yeah nice. it's it's been Congrats. fun thank you <laughs> appreciate that yeah and you have a huge presence on your iPads now too or a lot of people are using their iPads to read yeah right so first. um yeah this thing uh gosh what was it four years ago I mean it changed the game as far as uh consumption of news and uh we just so we had a uh, an iPad uh, app that was out and then we we didn't really like it, so uh -huh. um, it wasn't the most user-friendly experience. And then we came out with the newsstand app and rolled that out. And it's a, uh, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a way more functional app. I like it. You can share. You can do a lot more. Um, it's just it's a lot more user friendly as far as the user experience mm -hmm. goes. And you know, it's one of those things where, you know. If, Whenever I'm on a panel, like I'll be on like these media panels or right. something like that, and you always have the guy in the back of the room. He's like, "So, where do you think print's going? What do you keep, what do yeah. you think print is in five years?" And you know, I I told him uh, I told him last time this uh, this guy. I go, we don't care. It's our goal yeah. to not care. You know, if you right. want it, if you want it'll print, be there. If you want tablet, right. mobile. You know, if you want it on Google Glass, fantastic. Yeah. We don't care. It's we'll all be there. Right. We'll I be think there. print will be around. It's just got another function. That's all. Yeah, it's know, like books. It's and, it, you know, the books largest check I write is the United States Post Office, and you know, that, that's one that keeps me up at yeah. night. So there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Great to see you, Ian. Great Thank, to see thanks you thanks so for being on. Ian Anderson, publisher of Albuquerque Business First. Take a look at it online. Uh, we'll be back with more Morning Brew in just a moment.